at all. I know, know other people are pretty hip to it as well. Anyway, so they keep talking the whole show about how one of her upcoming concerts, she's going to give all of her money and proceeds to Hades. And, you know, that wouldn't be unusual if they didn't keep saying it over and over, Henrik, you know. And you have Oprah dressed in black and her dressed in white, so they're playing on polarities again. And uh, she just keeps saying, every cent that I make for this concert is going to Hades, going to Hades, going to Hades. And I'm like, what is this? Why does she keep saying Hades? And, you know, Hades in Greek mythology is the underworld. Or you know. Yeah, that's right. So, but she meant she meant to say Haiti, or yeah, she said Haiti. But I'm just saying that they 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 do these things on purpose. They they yeah, control the language on purpose. And um, she also said, you know, they 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 do it in jokes for the Generation X to not really see through. Like she was talking about how Oprah made her fried chicken or something that morning, and so she she had her soul for Oprah. She didn't say gave her soul. She said it. She had her soul. So they use these tricky little glitches in language to kind of like present the present the whole drama that they're trying to portray and metaphor wrapped in, in, in confusing speech. But really, behind the surface, they're talking about the enslavement of humanity. And, you know, all her videos have to do with the sexual energy and getting kids to, instead of harvesting it in their kundalini energy and storing the sexual energy and putting it to good use, to just expel it in, in pornographic ways. And everybody does that in, in every kind of ritual there ever has been where the, where the world's eyes are on them. It's been a common theme. Like O.J. Simpson was sex-related. It was husband and wife cheating type thing. You have Tiger Woods scandal right now. We're in the year of the tiger, right? So it's yeah. the Chinese zodiac year of the tiger. He's running his car into a tree. What's in a tree? Acorns. They hit the ground and they, they fertilize the ground and a new tree sparks up. And he's, you know, being accused of being very, very promiscuous sexually. So and same thing with Michael Jackson, of course. It's a sexual ritual. Their lives are designed from the ground up, almost, uh, to, present it, to be presented in the media as sort of these sexual demons. Yeah, I, I mean, Lady Gaga, she's just wheeled onto the stage as well. And I, I, I wonder if people really, if they really enjoy it or if they're just so programmed because it's out there in the mainstream that this is what you're going to listen to now. This is the latest thing and everyone just la latch onto it because, I mean, uh, it's always interesting to me how you can have this uh, pop icon showing up from nowhere and then being overnight and uh, instantaneously you know a success and everybody knows her name and everybody's watching what she's doing and and it's it's managed from day one and it's big money going into it i mean she's all over the place she went met with the uh, uh, the queen a while back didn't she as well you know yeah she dressed <laughs> she dressed up like the queen of hearts and that that reminds me of some symbolism that to do with harry potter and that the actress helen bonham carter i believe that's her name uh, yeah. She plays Bellatrix Lestrange, which is a very significant star in that Orion Pleiades Taurus constellation pointing towards the star of our ancestors that's predominant in all the Masonic tracing boards. And she's the new Queen of Hearts in Tim Burton's upcoming Alice in Wonderland remake. And um, she got a 93 tattoo. I, I think it was a temporary tattoo for uh, Harry Potter. But 93 is very important, again, to the OTO, the Golden Dawn, as it represents the Lima, which is will, and a gape, which is love. It's like they're... It's their, most significant number within the organization and she's related to English royalty and people that are tied into the elite and the upper echelons and of course she gets all these incredible acting roles because she's married to or yeah she's I think she's married to Tim Burton I think so and she had Roch, Rothschild uh, relations I think as well in her yeah yeah, yeah she does and um, I think there's a quick scene in the in the Alice in Wonderland trailer where there is a pig underneath her f foot or, or a hog and she's like I like I love the feel of a warm pig beneath my feet and so you have to look at these things. As, it, their symbolism is quite important. The, the pig there is representative of the boar, which is representative of Seth in this case. So she's putting her feet on a boar. A, a hot-bellied pig is like the warm, uh, destructive Mars energy. So, you know, you can see everything in, in symbolic terms. Um, that, that's what I do as a synchromistic. I mean, it's not, it's not harmful in any way to, to play around with these things in that way. Like if um, Obama, for instance, says that under his watch, NASA is going to be highly respected again, right? He says something like mm -hmm. that. So all of a sudden, Obama is, is a resonator of the White Rabbit because the White Rabbit's always checking his watch, right? And mm -hmm. Obama's kind of jumping around, leading us through this gigantic labyrinth maze, just like the rabbit does. And people revolve around the black stone in Mecca, and they sort of worship without thinking. And they just kind of circle this volcanic meteorite rock and, uh, and worship it and praise it. And, and Obama's kind of the same way. We're circling the, bra the black president. He's setting us to polarities, and uh, we're kind of worshiping him without thinking, and he's just leading us through this kind of maze. And I, you know, he's a puppet leader of sorts, but still, it's interesting to to see these these things as symbols, and the, to see that politicians and you know men of power and actors and actresses a lot of the time speak in symbolic terms. Mm. 
do, do you think they are um, uh, fully aware of themselves of what they're doing? I mean, this is a prevalent question that comes up every time in, in, in this uh, line of thinking and, and this, uh, discussing these uh, things. But it would seem uh, awful, uh, you know, in that sense, complicated for them to keep track on these things as well. You know, as they're playing uh, the political game on one hand, they're also playing the occult game on another one. And, and, and a theory there is that these things are... Uh, taking place from a more of a subconscious archetypal level and they're actually not aware at all of what they're doing but some management must go on there in terms of speech writers and, and things like that what do you think steve oh yeah i mean with with obama i mean he's again his his very name the osama the obama it's uh it's again the circumpunct eye of osiris and um you know he's very aware obama's very aware of what he represents and what his role is to play and and the people that write his scripts and whatnot are very aware of of all those things it's not a coincidence that we saw the norway spiral 2 days before he gave his or he accepted his nobel peace prize and then he fled the country it reported that he said he fled it it's a it's not a coincidence that we see these great signs in the sky these torsion beams uh, harp like particle imagery in the sky before before he gives some kind of incredible speech like that or it's just i don't think it's circumstantial in, in any way i don't think it's coincidence and um you know i'm talking about osiris a, a lot we're we're in the osiris month right now so happy osiris month henrik it's the green month the the avatar basically is osiris who taught the people of the land of egypt about farming he was one of the original first green men i've done some videos where i show jim carrey as a resonator as he's always in green as the riddler or the grinch or in the mask and um, basically, Osiris was just the god of vegetation. So when Osiris became ruler over the land of Egypt, the people were engaged in a practice of cannibalism. And Osiris helped them to evolve beyond cannibalism and to learn farming skills. So the translation of that, you could read into it, is Osiris is symbolic of the resurrection of new life, both physical and spiritual, at the spring equinox. And the act of cannibalism is symbolic of a man living as an animal, being consumed by ego and desire. So once the, the soul is taught to till the soil of truth, then man's animal nature is brought into submission. So basically he and the animal can both eat of the divine. And um, these are, you know, just the endless mythos revolving around this character completely keeps popping up over and over again in, in modern times. You know, Os Osiris, yes. Osiris wears the double plume feather, showing that he is the master of both planes, physical and mental. Leaders of today, like the Pope, and, and they wear in their garments. They wear all the symbolism of Osiris and of, of these ancient avatars that we're constantly sort of reliving in, in, our, in, in our small way, in our lives, like the story of Cain and Abel, for instance, brother against brother. We're, we're just kind of fulfilling these smaller roles where we're mimicking these the as above gods. Uh, the question is, is if we are learning the same, uh, I guess, lessons or mythological stories, though, that, that the ancient peoples were, if we talk about uh, 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 Egypt, the ancient people in, in Egypt and so forth, uh, it feels to me that they were had a more uh, direct approach to their mythology. They were, they were aware of these stories, but we're getting them in a subcontextual uh, way, which seems that the majority of the people uh, today are, are not consciously aware that they're being played out again and again. So the question is if, if we still are learning from them. What do you think, Steve? Um, yes, I do think we're learning from them, and you're right, we're, we're getting them in sort of small doses, small packets, and they're always disguised in fiction, or they're disguised in some kind of mythos, common ones like the Wizard of Oz, like uh, there's explanations for the lion, for instance, or the different characters, how they're, they can be viewed as archetypical energies for the New World Order, like the Scarecrow is Saturn, and that's why you see a lot of movies with people running through the cornfields, because Saturn is the Lord of the Harvest. The Tin Man is really the Ten Kings of the New Atlantis, New World Order, whatever. They view New York City as the the new west coast of Atlantis. So that's why they always say in movies like The Empire Strikes Back. It's the yeah. ancient empire of Atlantis striking back. So um, the Statue of Liberty is sitting out on an island, and the whole island of Manhattan is surrounded by waters, which is a symbolic of the biology of the human being. The pineal gland, the pineal gland, how it's surrounded by waters and how the secrets are in the secretions. The Tin Man is also symbolic of Jupiter. It's the symbol for Jupiter. The Lion is the Sun in Leo at the Vernal Equinox, and they're all heading towards the Emerald Green City. The Oz is an anagram, like I keep saying, for the open eye of Osiris. The Dog Toto is an anagram for Ordo Templi Orientis, the Order of the Kingdom of Templars. The Red Slippers that Dorothy wears are symbolic of Mars, who rules the feet and get the party started basically down the uh, yellow brick road of fear to see just a tiny man behind the wall. You know, she's she's... All these characters, all these avatars are, are questing towards this big tower, this emerald green palace to see this little little man behind the, the door. So they